Throughout the holidays, many of us will be using transit to get around. But talk to many commuters, and they'll say the existing network can feel crowded and limited. Fast forward 10 years, that network is going to look and feel a lot different. Over the next week, we're going to take you inside several transit expansion projects to show you how your commute is going to change. If you're riding transit um, right now in Toronto, if you hear the sound of a subway, you're going to be racing through the station because the, when the next one comes, it's not always reliable. Sheila Pizzi Allen is a longtime commuter and heads up the advocacy group TTC Riders. She shares the sentiments of many. It's really frustrating because all that time adds up because people are not just um, taking one mode of transit, they're often transferring from bus to streetcar to subway. In recent years, there have been longer wait times on many local transit routes, meaning packed buses and trains. There's only so much road space for people to move around in Toronto, so we absolutely need rapid transit. That call comes at a time when $70 billion is being spent by the Ontario government on transportation over the coming decade. It's really about making sure that we can connect people in a meaningful way and that saves them time, allows them to spend more time with their families. Transportation Minister Pramit Sarkaria is touting the provincial transit plan for overhauling how we get around with short-term actions and long-term projects. Beginning in early 2024, it's about to get cheaper traveling. The province is integrating TTC fares with GO Transit, eliminating the local fare when getting on to or off a GO bus or train. That's similar to other GTA municipalities. When it comes to new services, the Finch West and Eglinton Crosstown LRT lines could be operational within the next year. However, there are also several projects with shovels in the ground that are still a ways off, such as all-day two-way GO train service on several lines, expanding Union Station, building light rail lines across Hamilton and in Mississauga to the edge of Brampton, extending the Young Line north and the Blur Danforth line into Scarborough, along with creating the new Ontario line. Planning is underway for a few bus rapid transit routes too. For too long, I think previous governments promised a lot but never delivered. We have to build world-class transit in a city like Toronto. Uh, and we're making sure that we're, we're learning um, as we build. We're looking at uh, uh, what people and, and, and countries are doing internationally to make sure we have the best practices in Ontario. What's happening with transit is quite exciting. We had a whole missing generation of very little transit construction in the early 2000s. David Cooper is a transportation planner. He applauds the government's push to enhance transit infrastructure, noting it's good for economic development too. Developers like rails, and the reason why they like rails is because there's certainty, and there's a certainty from the sense of the infrastructure, a certainty from the sense of a high quality level of ridership. But he adds there's still room for improvement, especially getting people between west and east. He says extending the Shepherd Line is needed, along with fixing a backlogged King Street. Before the pandemic, we had 80,000 people a day on King Street. That is unheard of, that level of, of people taking surface transit service. Paisy Allen agrees with those points, adding the Waterfront East and Eglinton East LRT projects need to be funded and built too. It's good for the climate, it's good for congestion um, and, you know, fixing gridlock. Throughout the week, we're going to give you updates on the Ontario Line, the Finch West LRT, the Hazel McCallion LRT line in Mississauga, and the GO Transit expansion program. Now, if you miss any of these stories, we'll have all the details at citynews.ca. In Toronto, Nick Westall, City News.